Hey everyone, Ranger William here from the Overmountain Victory National Historic Trail, bringing you another part of our series, The Partisans United, Patriot Leaders and the Pursuit of Patrick Ferguson. So what we're doing with this series is taking more of a background biographical look at the uh, some of the key leaders who were involved in the Kings Mountain campaign and the journey down the Overmountain Victory Trail. So in our first episode of this series, we did a little bit of an overview. We talked about where the Overmountain Victory Trail goes today, uh, 330 miles crossing four states. We talked a little bit about the many different uh, jurisdictions, the counties, the districts that these guys were coming from. All these officers, a lot of them all the same rank, all potential for squabbling and fighting over command. On our first episode, we talked about Isaac Shelby. Um, we also covered guys like John Sevier, William Campbell, the McDowell brothers, Charles and Joseph Jr., Benjamin Cleveland, James Williams, and now another South Carolinian, Edward Lacey. Um, so talking about Edward Lacey, let's jump into it here. He is born in September of 1742, making him 38 years old at the Battle of Kings Mountain. Um, he's born in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania. Now, you've got a very adventurous spirit here. Um, the story is recorded that a, a fortune teller, um, it's recorded in the 19th century history books as a gypsy woman, uh, told his fortune as a young boy and said that he would be in many battles, but he would never be hurt. Um, so let's see how that plays out for him. At the age of 13, you're looking at um, 1755. The Braddock Expedition is happening there in Pennsylvania, making its way west as part of the French and Indian War. He actually runs away from home at 13 and joins up with the, uh, the uh, Pennsylvania soldiers, the provincials, who are helping that campaign, serving as a pack horseman or kind of like a, like a guide for the horses. Um so he's with them, he's at that battle, and he is not injured, which that battle is very important. Um, it's a big British defeat by the French and their Native American allies, and it takes his father uh, two years to find him. So it's not until 15 that he's brought back home to Shippensburg just to turn around and run away again. Um, he's going to apprentice to a bricklayer named William Adair. They're going to go to South Carolina, and he's going to be a South Carolinian for the most of our story here. Um, in 1766, here in South Carolina, he's going to marry Jane Harper. Um, they actually have uh, 11 children together, only 10 of them uh, surviving to adulthood. And when the revolution begins, you're going to see him get a military commission, a captain in South Carolina militia, going to take part in Williamson's expedition. This is going to be a... Um, kind of a, a punitive expedition by South Carolina against the British allied Cherokee nation to the West. So he's going to be part of that. He's going to be at the kind of famous battle of black hole, which happens up in the, in the North Carolina mountains. Um, but his military service, uh, it really heats up with the start of the partisan war. When you have the fall of Charleston in May of 1780, it comes up to these in, the kind of inland backcountry militia partisan groups to keep the war going against the British. He joins up with Thomas Sumter, the Gamecock. Um, this is going to be one of the more active partisan leaders for the course of the war. And for a while, the only partisan leader really active in the interior of South Carolina for a short time. Um, so you're going to see Edward Lacey be with him at battles such as Huck's defeat, Rocky Mount, Hanging Rock, Carey's Fort, Fishing Creek, Fish Dam Fort, Black Stocks. Some of these are victories. Some of these are defeats. But through all these fights, Edward Lacey is never being injured. He's never getting, uh, never, never getting hurt, just as his uh, fortune was told. Um, this keeps going even after the battle at uh, Kings Mountain. Again, no injuries there, even though his horse is shot from under him. 1781, he's going to stay under Thomas Sumter. You're looking at Orangeburg, Biggin Church, Quinby Bridge, Utah Springs, numerous other battles where he's going to be involved. And again, never being injured. Now, I want to point out there is something there on the slide. We talked a little bit about this in the James Williams episode. But James Williams, when he actually deserts from Thomas Sumter's camp, taking some men and supplies, it's Edward Lacey who was sent to go and find him, to go and force Williams to come back to Thomas Sumter's camp, um, doing so at gunpoint. He actually gets Williams alone, pulls a pistol on him, makes him give his word and promise that he'll return. Um, 
later on during the King's Mountain story, when you have uh, the Overmountain men are coming down, this other group of South Carolinians and North Carolinians are trying to join up with them. Edward Lacey is sent to go make contact with the Overmountain guys, say, hey, make sure you're going to the right place. James Williams may have been telling you some wrong information. And when his lawyer, when his guide trying to find the Overmountain guys gets lost a few times, Lacey starts to suspect maybe he's a loyalist. Maybe he's purposefully trying to mislead me in the dark. Again, pulls a pistol on his guide at least once, possibly twice, trying to make sure that they get to the right destination. So he really likes to, to pull that iron on people. Um, now, at the end of the war, he serves through the entire revolution, again, never being injured. Uh, after the war, he serves as a, a brigadier general of militia in South Carolina, a county court judge for a while. And in 1797, he's going to move west. He's going to live in Tennessee for a while, just for a couple of years, until 1799. He's going to move out to Livingston, Kentucky, where he serves as the county judge. Now, one part of his, few, of his, uh, his fortune that he wasn't going to be hurt at the battles, but it did warn him of drowning. So all through his military career, many rivers, many creeks. I don't know if that was still in the back of his mind, but on March 20th, 1813, at 71 years old, he is going to be, as a court judge, riding out to take care of some official business. He's crossing Deer Creek when his horse rears up and throws him into the river. And he's actually going to, uh, in the cold water, he's going to have some medical issues and he's going to drown. He's going to pass away there March 20th, 1813 at 71 years old. So I don't know if he thought about that maybe um, as his horse started to started to rear, um, but definitely interesting that this story has survived all these centuries of his fortune being told. So there you have Edward Lacey, um, one of Thomas Sumter's right-hand guys, one of the South Carolina leaders involved with the, uh, the Overmountain men, the Yadkin Valley Patriots, the other Patriots who gathered up for the Kings Mountain campaign and brought their abilities, brought their experience, their leadership, and joined together for the Overmountain Victory campaign. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed uh, learning about him. And uh, thank you for watching. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn a little bit more about some of the other partisan leaders as well. So thanks for watching.